good morning, everyone. My name is Luca Bologna. I work in, uh, in Michele's group. And today's, today I'm going to give you um, an, o an overall idea of what the brain simulation platform is, the tools and services it provides in order for you to start taking advantage of what we put there in order to collaborate with your, uh, with your partners and, and colleagues, taking advantage of both the brain simulation platform and the collaboratory environment. So the brain simulation platform is a very uh, dynamic environment that we update uh, constantly with new tools and new services. And it provides uh, many instruments to uh, build, reconstruct, simulate uh, brain models. In order to access the brain simulation platform, uh, you can go to the Human Brain Project website here. Then you click on Brain Simulation. And you have an introductory page. On Brain Simulation, at, at the bottom, you have a direct link to the brain simulation platform itself. By now, you should have um, credentials to access the collaboratory. So once you are prompted with this uh, login page, you, you can log in. OK, so this is the overview page of the brain simulation platform. Uh, before going on with the platform, I will would like just to spend a few few minutes on uh, the environment where the platform is integrated, it is enshrined. After the coffee break, you, you will have a full talk uh, by Akush on the collaboratory. Uh, but just give me uh, really a couple of minutes to, to tell you the, the tools that of the collaboratory that, that we use for the brain simulation platform. So basically, the collaboratory is, uh, is a big container or areas or spaces where you can put your data, your documents, uh, create tool in order to do your research work. And this, these areas and workspaces are called collab, hence the name collaboratory, because it, it's a collaborative environment. So the collab is basically all you, all you see here. So this is, the, this is the, the collab, and it can be divided into basically two parts. The, the top part here, where you can find links which are common to all the collabs. So the home of the collaboratory, the, the collabs, if you want to, uh, to go to some other collab than the one that you're visualizing here, the platform. So not only the brain simulation platform, but also the neuroinformatic, the neuromorphics, the platform Michael was uh, talking before. Then you have the feedback, the forum, and the link to your profile. While the bottom part of these windows is collab specific. Here we open the brain simulation platform. So we, we see the name of the collab here. We see that it is public, and I am a member. So you also have the icon of the member. And the collab, the, the workspace for the, for the collab is basically divided into two main parts, which are the menu here, where, where you can find all the items of the tools or, do, or documents that you want to visualize, and the central workspace where, where you visualize what you click here. Then additionally, there's this chat window if you want to exchange rapidly with your, with your collaborators. So the brain simulation platform is um, organized by use cases, which are uh, specific procedures um, relating to one topic and one realistic scenario. But of course, uh, the core of the, or the, the platform is modeling. So before starting with the use cases, I just want to draw your attention to this uh, folder here, model where you can find documents on the models. So basically, the scientific background of what we are doing in the platform. These are uh, basically plain, plain text document, but we use for links. For example, if you open, if you open the, the scaffold model document, uh, we explain what we mean by a scaffold model. So similarly to scaffold for buildings in construction science, our idea of modeling uh, start from the data, the data analysis and the organization, and then designing, implementing the model, finally the simulation, the validation of the model to see whether the model matches uh, real data, and the simplification in order to use this model for higher level architecture, like neuromorphic, neurorobotics, and so on and so forth. Then, once, once uh, the scaffold model concept is clear, 
you can go from uh, bottom, let's say, uh, bottom layer to top layer by reading this document. We have documents on signal cascades, inhibition and calcium cascades, so uh, molecular models, and then uh, up to brain region. So you have human neurons, cerebellum, the hippocampus. If you open, for example, the document on the hippocampus, you have uh, some explanation of what the hippocampus is, the main role, which is our specific uh, aim in the, in the Human Brain Project for modeling the hippocampus, the work we are doing for the community, so our community and what we intend the community uh, um, to take advantage of this, the roadmap, the people working on the hippocampus, and so on and so forth. So please refer to this page if you want some uh, more details on the scientific background of the modeling tools that I'm, I'm gonna present. So use case. As I was saying before, the platform is organized by, uh, by use cases, which are realistic scenarios of uh, some research work that you want to perform. Uh, the first use case I would like to show is, uh, it is a group of use cases, which is about uh, analyzing electrophysiological traces. I will give you an example of uh, how these use cases are implemented, and then spend a few words on uh, the content of individual use cases. So uh, use cases are basically implemented in two ways, uh, or if you prefer, two technologies. The first one is web application. So basically front-end and back-end, which, which means HTML page, JavaScript, CSS, and some back-end server that perform computation. The second one is Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook are environments, uh, interactive notebooks of in, in all mm, the cases of the use case, I'm going to present Python code that you can uh, see, you can interact with, you can do your code, you can change, you can share the code with your collaborators. So I will start cloning or executing one of these use cases, uh, guide you through the procedure of copying this tool to your uh, specific collab, and then give you an idea of these uh, two types of technologies that we are using. So if I click on the feature extraction use case, I'm prompted with this interface. This means that uh, I have the, the possibility to add this tool, the feature extraction, to one of my collabs. Uh, either an existing one, or I can create a new collab here in order to put uh, the tool. So I will click on create, and this will be uh, HBP BSP uh, school. Okay, I click on create. And now what's happening here is that the use case uh, feature extraction is being, has been cloned to the collab that I just created. Takes some time, but now I'm redirected, redirected to this collab. And as you can see, I have all the, the tools that the collaborator offers, so a storage space if I want to put uh, some data there, the team, the overview, the collab, plus this use case that I just cloned. Here I have, I have the, the name, it is a public, again, so everyone with an account can, can see this, this collab. And here in the center work, workspace, we have uh, the feature extraction tool. So as you can see, this is basically HTML. But behind this, we, we do some, we do some uh, computing with the server which is implemented in, uh, in Django, basically, which is a, a Python server. So the approach of, of the web application is just uh, point and click. So you access by clicking on buttons, you do your choice, but you don't see any code. It's, it's, it's a code-free approach. So it takes some time to, to load the data uh, because it is uh, computing, uh, I mean, it's, it's fetching all the data on the back end, I can select and so on. I will not go into the details of this because we will see this this afternoon for the ends on, on uh, feature extraction, but I just wanted to show you what a use case implemented via a web application is. Now I go back to the page of the trace analysis use case uh, here. And we see that there are three more use cases, which are about sy synaptic event fitting. These are three different declinations uh, of, of uh, the synaptic events fitting procedure. So if I click on the first one, again, I can, add, I can add it to a collab. I will choose the same collab that I just created. 
this one, and the process is the same. So, so the system is cloning the tool to Microlab. This, this specific use case is implemented with the Jupyter Notebook. So as I was saying before, uh, Jupyter Notebook is just, you can consider it uh, like a code sheet. So you put your code there, and uh, you have the advantage that it is um, like, um, it is conceived as a real notebook. So you write your note and then you jump from one note to the other if you want to change, if you want to correct it. So the Jupyter notebook, notebook consists of boxes here that are called cells where some code is. And here you, uh, you have access to all the code that is being used to implement the tool, okay? Uh, you can play around with some uh, Python library in order to beautify a Jupyter not notebook by putting some, uh, some buttons, some edits, some radio button, checkbox, and all. You don't have the power of a full uh, front-end application, uh, but still I, I find that this is a good compromise between the pure code and some more nice and more friendly uh, interface. So I will show you this. Uh, if I run all the cell of the notebook, so basically I'm executing all the code. Here you can see that the, this, I'm telling you this because I want you to be ready uh, to the tools that you will be cloning during this week. So you know what, uh, what uh, you're gonna expect while cloning the use cases and these are, these are small tricks that, that you can use while, while executing them. So this circle is, is filled. This means that the Jupyter kernel is working. So he's doing some, some computation. Should take a few seconds, okay. So this is what I was saying before. The, the code has been used to implement some useful interface. So you have button, you have uh, edit box here, so you, you can select your data, for example. But the code is still there. So if you click, on, click here to toggle on off the raw code, you still have access to everything, okay? So this is a good compromise. If you, want to, if you want to do some programming in Python because you're an expert of Python but you want a couple of buttons, you just import the IPy widget library and, and you program this button. Okay, so let's go back to, to our use cases. Okay, so trace analysis. Four use cases, feature extraction that we'll, we'll see this afternoon and three Jupyter notebooks. Still on the data, morphology analysis. Morphology analysis is uh, a family of use cases about morphology. So you have basically here um, two tools, the morphology analysis itself and the morphology validation. The morphology analysis is uh, a Jupyter notebook implemented via a Python package which is called NearRAM and uh, which is about extracting morphometrics, so like neurite lengths or number of bifurcation per segment, if you will, and also to perform some validation on morphology. For example, whether there are a missing soma in your morphology or a missing parent point. I will show you this. It is a Jupyter notebook. You can clone it in the end of session if you want. Uh, but the other, the other one is a web application. So this is a morphology visualization. It is pretty... Uh, pretty nice. If you click on this, you are provided with a list of models whose morphology you may want to, uh, to see. So if I click on this model, the morphology that has been used to build, to build that model is, sh is shown here. So here is the morphology. You can zoom, you can turn. Here's the soma. The blue is the axon, then right. You can align here to the, to the axis of your preference, okay, or go full screen. Okay, so this is open in another tab. So still in order to access this tool, you need to be logged into the collaboratory, but it is not cloned, so it is open. Okay, so. Excuse me, you said it's not cloned, but it's what? It is, not, it is so it is in an open tab, in an open window, it is not cloned into one of your collabs. So you, you will not have it as an item here in the left menu. Well, what does that mean? Like, what does it imply? That you can't that, that, no, no, this just implies that you, you don't have the tools of the collaboratory. So if you want to share a data, you will, 
have to go back to one of your collab and you will not be able to do this from this page. Okay, so it's just, it's just a visualizer. Usually what people uh, do is you create your collab, you put your data, and then you link to the brain simulation platform to the morphology visualization to visualize the data, for example. Okay, so, so this was about data, trace analysis, uh, morphology data, but uh, let's start with uh, building some model. So here we have a, a use case family, which is called single cell building, and it collects, it collects a, few, a few tools, several tools, I would say, about building uh, a model of a single cell. Here we have a Hodgkin Axel Neuron Builder. We will see this tomorrow in, in details. This is a web application, so I will not go uh, into this. I will just present this, uh, these tools that you can explore later. All these other tools are Jupyter Notebook. And basically you have the opportunity to take a model that has been already optimized and change some parameters, or build your own model from HPP data, from the database of, the, of HPP. Then you have uh, three Jupyter notebooks on the cerebellum, either optimization of uh, a single section or a multi-compartmental model here, or simulation and validation of a Purkinje cell. And then you have a last notebook on uh, striatum neurons. So let's go up a little bit. You see we are, we are going from the data, like in the, in the concept of the scaffold model that I presented before, we're going up from the data till the model of our circuits. So going through the analysis and then single cell and then the circuits and then small circuit and then the brain area. Circuit building. B basically circuit building consists in uh, two steps. Cell placement, which means we take some neurons and we place the neuron in a volume of a brain region and then connect them. So how we connect the neuron among them. Uh, we have uh, all of this Im is implemented through Jupyter Notebooks. We have three examples for, uh, f uh, for the cell placement, the cerebellum, the hippocampus, the striatum, and the same holds for, uh, for the connectome. Okay, you will have a, a, a presentation on this uh, tomorrow because Jean-Denis is going to present the, the circuit building process, so he will probably talk, talk, to, you, talk to you about uh, the cell placement and, and the connectome of the hippocampus. Now let's say our, our single cell model is ready. Now we want to simulate it. We want to see how it behaves, whether the, the behavior uh, somehow matches what we observed in, in real data. And in order to do this, we have a single cell in silico um, experiment under current clamp, and this is again a, um, a web application. So if I click here, again I can choose a model and I will open the, the web application. This is part of the Hodgkin Axle Neuron Builder that we will see tomorrow, but I just want, want to give you a taste of what this application is and to show you a first simulated trace. So you wait a few seconds in order for the data to be loaded into the application. Okay. Now, on the left part, we have, we have the morphology. So again, we can zoom, we can move, we can rotate. And also, pretty interestingly, if you click on this button, we have a dendrogram of the morphology. So, for example, if I click here, down here, I can see the properties of this segment, the diameter, for example, the channels, and so on, and so on and so forth. You cannot see it here, but if you put the mouse, on top of one of the segments, uh, the box uh, turns yellow, so you, you see what, what you are doing. Or you can sec select the, the segment here, okay? If you, want, if you want this, you will see the yellow part here, the yellow, the yellow segment, and then the properties down here. And then, if you, if you want to set the parameters for, th for the simulation, you just open the simulation tab and you set your parameters. I will just uh, give you an example, so I will click a random on some segment, uh, you have the soma here, you have, you see here, record from the soma, then write 19, this segment, and then I, I will start the simulation. Okay, so the, simula this, the simulation is going on, and you can see the, the electrophysiological traces recorded from that segment that I chose. 
Okay. So this is the first example of, of cell simulation. Okay, so we are still at the level of a single cell, but we go up a little bit and try to build this small circuit in CIDIC, in CIDIC experiment. Again, this will be shown uh, tomorrow by, uh, by Jean-Denis. You have one for the, for the hippocampus at the moment, and it's a, it's a nice web application. I will just open it, but I will not run the simulation. So you, you open the web application, you have the hippocampus shown on the left. You can zoom, you can click on individual neurons, build your small circuit, decide from where to uh, record and which neurons stimulate, and then perform the simulation. But still here we are at the level of of a small circuit, one step above, you have a brain area. And again, this is a, a, a complete uh, workflow of circuit building and, and simulation. We have two, we have the hippocampus and the cerebellum, and we will see this more in detail, in detail tomorrow and during this week. Okay, so uh, this is a very brief and general overview of the use cases, what they offer. Of course, you are free to test, to clone, to execute whatever use case you want and ask us. Most of the developers of these use cases will be here during this, this uh, school. So please feel free to refer to any one of the developers to ask them some, some more details. Uh, there are two tools that mm, we have developed uh, and are being used for the brain simulation platform that are not on simulation, but are very important because they are uh, about catalog of models and also validation tests. Okay, so these tools are, uh, can be cloned. In your collab, I will open the collab I just created for this demonstration. If I go here and I click on add, I can choose um, among many tools that are available to uh, to all the users. So model catalog, add to navigation, and here you see a new item. This model catalog is, is a collection of models. So once a model is ready, we, we curate the metadata and all the files you need to run the model and we put the model in the model catalog. So for example, if I choose here, uh, the hippocampus again, I do save and I close the window. I am provided with all the, the models referring to the hippocampus. Michael. I'm uh, still trying to develop and remind a distinction between cloning and using. I'm assuming cloning means things that when you have it, you can change, whereas using is, is excess without modifying. Yeah. Uh, so the hippocampus is a really large object, and some of it I'll want to change, but most of it I'll want to leave as is. So. Yes, okay, so with respect to the general use case, in general, uh, you execute the use case and you clone the use case in your collab, but if the use case is a web application, you cannot change it. If it is code, you can change it, because the, 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 this is why we are coping or clone, because the first, the first action is cloning, because it's, it's exactly the same, but then you can change the Jupyter notebook, okay? With respect to the, mod, to the model catalog, of course you may want to add your model, but the model catalog is related to the collab here, so in our case, HPP, BSP, where you clone the application. So, I, uh, sorry, wh where you add this application, this item. So I, I add the model catalog, and now let's say that I want to add the model. Okay, I will add the model on the model catalog. Everyone can see the model, but only I can change the model because I'm a member of the collab where the model catalog, catalog has been ha added. Okay, so this is uh, based on, on membership of the collab. Uh, so here we have uh, a few models. We click on, on one of these models and we have the morphology. We have a link to download the model. We have some description. Uh, of the model here, the order of the model, and so on and so forth. 
strictly related to the model catalog is uh, the validation uh, app, so the model validation. Again, we click on, on add here. Okay. I think it's slow. Okay, I'll try to refresh the page. So model validation is about uh, testing a model. So see how the model behaves, how it fits electrophysiological data. So you want to create, okay. Okay, next navigation. So you want to create some test to see whether your model behaves well. And then you may want to change the test, you, you may test, you may want to test your, your model uh, with different trials, uh, with different parameters, and so on. So here the principle is the same. You select an area, for example, the hippocampus here. You say, okay, okay, you close. And you are provided with, with, two, with, with two panels, which are the models panel and the test panel. Okay, so you can choose a, mo a model to see whether it's been, uh, it has been validated by someone, or you can choose a test and see which model has been validated with this test. Again, if you click on one of these, uh, you have information on the model. Then if you click on the test, one of the test item, uh, you have information on, on the validation test, uh, you have the version, you have the results if it has been tested al already with some data. I don't think this is, this. so this test has not been uh, validated with, with any of that model so far. You can add some comments if you want and so on. So these tools are, are very important and uh, you, can, uh, you can add them to your collab without necessarily passing through the brain simulation platform. Okay, so uh, basically this is a general overview of all the use cases, but there is one subfolder here in the online use cases, which, which is the online courses. So uh, the MOOC initialization uh, re refers to uh, massive open online courses, this MOOC. So we provide students with some tool in order to test, to study, and so on. If I click on this MOOC initialization, I see three use cases. Reconstruction in silicon neuroscience, the multiscale brain. Click on the first one. So you can see here, these are exercises from the, from the edX MOOC simulation neuroscience. So I click on this one, and I, here on the top, right top, I have a link to the course. So edX is a platform that has been <coughs> built by uh, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, and um, uh, it's similar to Coursera, so you can uh, subscribe there. The courses are free. If you want a certificate, you can pay like a small fee, uh, around $50 and so on. And this course is about simulation neuroscience as, as it has been organized by the EPFL, and here you have the professor and so on. So this course is uh, a six weeks course. You have a first week of introduction. At the end, you have an examination, a graded exam. So. In our online courses, we have links to the exercise, the exercises referring, referring to the weeks of the course. For example, week two, we have neuroinformatics. Again, we can clone this exercise uh, to our collab. And this is a Jupyter notebook that, that uh, guides you through curate uh, some data and record the data, register the data uh, in the neuroinformatic platform, thanks to the provenance editor. So you have a description here. You have this uh, first section, which is about the methods used to record the data and curate the data, what the data are. Then you have a second section about registering your data in the provenance editor again. So here, you, the neuroinformatic platform is in a very, uh, here, in a very nutshell, it is where all the data uh, are um, saved, they are curated, they are organized, API are developed in order to access the data, to put the data there, and so on. 
So this exercise about, is about putting some data in the, in the neuroinformatics platform, and then you have a last section uh, here about submitting the data. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back to the online use cases. I think uh, you have a general enough idea of um, what use cases are. But the question is, uh, where is science here? So of course we provide many tools, many, many services, but uh, we don't want to lose our eye on, on the science. So if you want a, a list of all the rec re recent publications about the brain simulation platform, you go here, you click on publications, and um, you have a list of publications. But we recently added a folder, which is called live papers. And with live papers, we mean um, an interactive document which refers to a published paper but from which you can access the data and the model that have been used to publish that paper. So at the moment we have an item, we click on this item and another, another club is open. Okay, so the live paper is uh, basically a document here, HTML document, document which has some static information like the authors, the other information, the corresponding author and so forth. But then you have interactive link. So you have the link to the journal, you have the link to the DOI, you have the citation, the license, and so on. And most importantly, you have a section which is about data and models used for that paper. So this particular paper is about a modeling approach to investigate channel density variability in hippocampal cells. And of course, we used uh, many uh, real data from morphologies to uh, electrophysiological traces and then the model. So optimized model and mod files, neuron mod files. So what we decided to do here is to give the opportunity to the user to either download, for example, the morphology or to see the morphology. So if you click on view uh, morphology on one of the morphology, again, the use case that, that I showed you before is open and you can see uh, the morphology in, in details. Okay, so this is for, for the morphology, same for the electrophysiological traces. We are developing an interface to visualize um, the traces uh, interactively, so uh, you can zoom, you can turn, you can, you can proceed in the simulation, but at the moment, uh, we give the opportunity to download the data. So click on here, save file, and so on. Same for the mod files. So as you can see here, in figure four of this paper, which is linked, so le let me check whether it's ready because it should be ready. Uh, no, it's not fun. So it is ready, should be ready today, but in the US. So we are a bit, uh, I mean, we have to wait for some hours, but by today or tomorrow, I guess th this link will work. Uh, so for the mod files, here you can see that uh, I was saying in figure 4a some simulated traces are shown. So if you want to see uh, and run the model with which that traces have been uh, generated, you click on that specific model and that model is opened in the neurons as a service. So as you can see, we are linked the tools that we are building in order for the user to, to use them in a smart way. Okay, so I can close this as well, this, and this. Okay, so um, another tool which is not uh, intended for science, but it can be useful if you want to have a look of uh, how many people are using the platform, how many use, case, use cases have been cloned, uh, in the last uh, week, for example, on in the last day, uh, here you have a history panel where you can choose the date and you can see, for example, the location of the people that, uh, that use the platform. You have a panel with community number of users. You have the page views and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is just a monitor of the brand simulation platform that you can access anytime. And finally, uh, I would like to draw your attention to, to the guidebook. So the, the guidebook is uh, basically where the place where we collect all the, uh, all the documentation 
on the use cases that we are developing, if you access, for example, the getting started uh, page of the guidebook, you are the procedure, uh, you are provided with the procedure that I just explained on cloning and executing a use case. You have some uh, description of small icons that are uh, here on the right part of the panel of each use case that indicate the target audience for that use case. So either uh, it is everybody, so a standard user can use the use case because it is very friendly, or a power user is needed for, uh, for use the use case, so you have to know uh, what you are doing, what the use case, expert, developer, and so on. You have some description on uh, the maturity level of that uh, use case, so either it is better version, so robust enough uh, for you to use it, or still in the experimental phase. You have a description of what HPC access are. So many use cases need some uh, um, HPC, so high performance computing systems to be run, because they, re they are time consuming and resource consuming. Okay, so uh, this means bring your own uh, resources, so you can bring actually your, your personal account on, on the, the HPC system uh, you prefer. And then here you have a description of uh, the service uh, accessibility, so what your membership allows you to do in, uh, in the platform. Okay, so, and the rest of the guidebook is uh, on individual use cases. So here, for example, the feature extraction that I showed you before, you have a, a full explanation of what it is uh, in much more detail because, of course, while going through the Jupyter Notebook and through the web applications, you have, uh, you run, but you're supposed to have an idea of what you're doing. But if you want some more details and explanations, you, you come here to the guidebook, you have a description, you have a link to the, to the packages that are being used to run um, the application. Uh, you have some details on the data if needed, for example, and, and again, the description of the, of the steps to be followed. And this holds for basically all the use cases. Okay, so I think my uh, general presentation of the brain simulation platform is, uh, is finished. Uh, we have some time for questions if you want. Uh, for the moment, thanks for your attention.